This is what we mean by the business of engineering, is how do we fill in that gap between what our PDM system does and what ERP does, right, in a way that works. So let's talk about what, what we really see when we go visit customers every day, right? We see a lot of money spent on, on PDM, a lot of money spent on ERP, but then you look at all the things that you've got to do to create a product, bills of material, variants and options, the product line engineering stuff, just running ECO processes, right? These don't fit well in PDM or ERP, but that doesn't prevent us from trying, right? Think about the huge investments we've all been making, right, for a decade now, trying to get PDM to absorb some of that cloud in the middle or having ERP come back into engineering and do some of that work, right? It's not working. So what's really going on, what we call the business of engineering, all those things that are electro electronic and software and manufacturability, getting the labels right, the packaging correct, actually making profitable products, it ends up in email, Excel, hopefully not the fax machine anymore. Um, see a lot of Dropbox. Uh, by the way, the people who are using SharePoint and Lotus Notes think you're a step above you know who you are, it's not working any better than this is, right? It's not a networked system, right? We've got to find a way for the engineer sitting at his desk to have the full visibility. So, the ERP system has a very clear responsibility. Uh, balance sheet integrity. Right? As a CEO, I know I mean, that my, our financial system's number one job is to make sure that we can publish a gap standard balance sheet. Things like flexibility and changing processes and all that, that's actually kind of scary, right? You do not want to break the integrity of the balance sheet in your financial statements. The PDM system, your CAD manager, right? The number one purpose of that system, what it is designed to do is to maintain the integrity of CAD configurations. So what does PDM need to be really good at? Stability, right? It's gotta be fixed. It doesn't handle change very well. So what are the attributes of that thing in the middle? Well, let me actually highlight something. Your ERP users, they tend to be specialists. That's what they do all day long, right? Your CAD users, I would call them also specialists. They're willing to live with a certain user interface that it talks to them. Don't change it, please, right? They tend to be very highly educated, very well trained in exactly their tool. Now let's look at the big cloud in the middle where the business of engineering goes on. What kind of users do we have there? It's your global users. It tends to be a lot of casual users. Not mean they don't dress well, but they, they're in and out of the PLM system infrequently. They get a workflow message. They gotta jump in, right? It's your non-employee users, the ones that are contractors. You don't have an opportunity to, change, to train them. The key thing about the attribute about that cloud in the middle is that everything changes all the time. That's what we've learned, right? The number one thing we've learned doing this Eris journey is we have got to support change and you guys change your workflows and your data models constantly. Why are you doing that? It turns out that the, the bubble in the middle there, that's where your competitive advantage is. That's where that's the difference between Airbus and Boeing, between Ford and GM. That's how you compete is on those business processes that build a better product faster, right, for less cost. So why, why did SAP not solve this problem already? You know, why, why did Siemens not fix the problem for us? Right? And I gotta tell you, it's not, not for lack of trying. The, the amount of money spent customizing both of these systems uh, to enable change has been enormous, right? Turns out, data model and software architecture really do matter, right? So one of the things we've been fortunate is a very bright bunch of people at Eris in the beginning, uh, thinking about an architecture where the data model can change daily, the, the process models can change daily. This actually turns out to be a really good way to enable change and drive your business of engineering. 
So how do we go forward? Um, I called it a reboot. We need to think about where we're investing time. Time, money, same thing, right? We are not balanced today with what I would call the new reality, the way the system has to all fit together. So we've put some names on this, and this is good for us to help understand. It's good when we communicate with people to understand. We have to help you be flexible. Does this mean, is this the end of mechanical? I think most people here know I'm an electrical engineer. I'm not a gearhead. However, it's not the end of mechanical, right? The science of engineering is still very, very critical, right? We and our partners who are here continue to invest in 3D CAD and simulation management. Absolutely critical to get that right. Matter of fact, it's very critical because the CAD configurations tend to be very sensitive. We only propose at this point that all of you and your, we gotta take it up through management, understand that a balance is needed. We can't put all of our IT investment in managing CAD and leave the rest of the stuff sitting in Excel. It doesn't make sense, right? The other thing that's become very apparent to me going through this last year is we can't fix it all with one system. You know, if we, if we align ourselves up as this enterprise PLM, business of engineering platform, right? We've got the flexibility, we've got the simpler user interface, we can change all the time, right? I'm at the point where I'm starting to believe we need to think about a two-level architecture, that there is a very real reason to buy a PDM system. Whether you buy it from us, we have quite a nice one, or from Siemens, Dassault, PTC, Autodesk is doing quite well, right? There is an architecture which is designed to manage 3D CAD and maintain the integrity of those CAD file configurations. It's not the same architecture that you need to drive the business processes, the bills of material, the electronics, the software, stuff changes too fast. So we're now talking very clearly that there are two levels needed within engineering. 